on this episode of Gas Stage Cappuccino. Danny is flying solo again, and he discusses boundaries and how creating rules will give you more freedom. And when I say he discusses, I mean I discuss. I'm Danny. What is up? It is Danny Lear. I'm here for Gas Station Cappuccino, and today I have another solo show. I know last week I said that I thought Dean would be back. Uh, well, I still think he will be soon. But in the meantime, I want to keep these rolling. The goal is to keep pumping out one a week, at least for the time being, and get consistent with that. So let me know what you want to hear, podcast at caffeineandkilos.com. If you have ideas, if you like the solo shows, if you hate them and say you should probably just shut it down until Dean comes back, um, that's, that's fine too. Just let me know what's up. Okay, communicate with me. All right, so today, I'm going to talk about something that uh, is important, I think, and it's something that I struggle with at times, but every time I come back to it, I'm always happy and it makes me happier. And that is actually the idea of boundaries creating freedom. And that kind of sounds counterintuitive, could even say it's the juxtaposition of uh, boundaries creating freedom, two things that may seem different or the paradox, I guess would be a better way to put that, the paradox of freedom. Um, and I know that actually Jocko Willink has the book that's called Discipline Equals Freedom, which I have not read. Um, although I do like Jocko Willink, uh, Extreme Ownership. It's a great book. Um, anyway, so I believe this kind of the what what he really gets into there. And it is that you can actually be more free and make the correct choices by having boundaries on your life. So I'm going to give you an example with myself and where this comes into play and then some other things that might might help out. Um, And that really is with my kids and then with my phone. All right. So, you know, when I'm home, when the kids are awake, you know, there's a few a few days during the week where that's only a couple hours. You know, it's like get home for dinner, and the kids go to bed a couple hours later, and that's really it. You know, if I've been gone all day at work and whatnot. So every now and then, occasionally, something's going on. Maybe there's something with for work that is an emergency or or a perceived emergency. Maybe there's something that I didn't get done that day that I really planned on getting done. So I'm trying to finish that off. Maybe someone just sends me a text message. Then I feel like it's important to get back to him. Maybe it's just a friend. Maybe again, it's something for business or whatever. And I feel like, you know, I have to do it now. Or maybe it is uh, if you <laughs> on on Instagram or something, scrolling through. Maybe I got caught up in the Nature is Metal Instagram page. Uh, by the way, uh, if you're squeamish, I probably wouldn't check that out. But if you are not super squeamish, the the Instagram page Nature is Metal is pretty intense. It's like uh, the day they posted like a leopard um, fighting with a wild boar. It's pretty 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 crazy. Leopard jumps on his back. They kind of fight it out. The whole thing. Uh, a couple bears getting after it fighting um anyway so that's kind of that's not all fighting but it's just you know nature's crazy should these hail storms in australia like 70 mile an hour uh you know balls of hail that are like the size of a, a racquetball is absolutely insane so if you're into that check that out but what could happen is maybe you are checking that out said so, oh let me go see what's up there next thing you know it's 30 minutes later and you've been staring at your phone and then i look up this is my experience. I look up the clock and now it's, it's bath time. And for the last hour, my kids have been playing amongst themselves or watching TV or whatever. And I've been sitting here on my phone, not interacting with them. And is that really what I want to do? You know, is that the example I want to set? Like, I'll just sit here on my phone and fucking ignore them. Like that doesn't seem good. Or is that the example I want to set that whatever I'm doing there is more important than them? Not to mention that time, time is short and it does keep going by. You know, they are getting older um, and they're going to continue to get older every day, every minute. And I don't want to look back five years from now when my two-year-old is seven and realize how many times I had the opportunity to play with her when she was two years old that I didn't never be that age again. 
they are, they're just getting older. You know, as my, my six-year-old, is she going to be off in college? And I'm going to look back and think of the times that I was sitting on my couch staring at my fucking phone instead of playing with her, doing something with her. And so that's something that's a, it's a real problem. And then also with that, if even if it's work related, if it's not Instagram, if it's if it's work or whatever, still you you feel guilty. It's like when you're doing the work, you're thinking that you should be spending this time with the kids, and then the reverse happens. You're spending time with your kids at the park or something, and you're thinking about this work that you need to be doing or that should be done that's not. So you can't enjoy spending time with your family because you're worried about work. You can't get the work done appropriately because you're worried about not spending time with your family. So what you need, what I need in this situation is boundaries, discipline, rules. What you really need is rules. So my business coach, Craig Ballantyne, is fantastic. And this is one area where he really excels is creating the appropriate boundaries and structures that allow you to do your best work when you should be working and also spend more time with your family when you should be spending time with family. So what I do is every night when I get home and when it's dinner time, I walk to the other room, the laundry room, and I put my phone down in that room. And then I do not touch it again until the kids are in bed. And it's about two and a half hours or so. So it's not this like crazy stretch, but I'll tell you what, I don't know how many, I don't know about you, like, is there a two and a half hour period where you're at home that you're not looking at your phone? I don't know. A lot of people, I bet there's not because before I started doing this, that was definitely the case with me. There was not that period of time. And also every now and then I'll slip up. I'll get caught in a routine where I'm not doing it. I kind of fall out of that habit. And then I got to check myself and, and kind of get it going again. And so part of the way I check myself is I just make a part of my power list. We can do a whole episode on that at some point. But I just make it a, one of the goals for the day is no phone between 5 and 7.30 p.m. or whatever. Okay. And then I know it's going to happen because I don't want to lose the day, throw my, throw away my whole day because I had to look at my phone. That seems silly. And where I put it is actually kind of fun also is this was my coach, Craig Ballantyne's idea is I made a phone bed. Okay. And I think he saw it like Ariana Huffington. She actually was like selling phone beds. Like it's a bed for your phone. They're like $40 or something silly. What I did is my Six-year-old and I, she was four or five at the time. We made one. We got out an egg carton and we cut out the top, cut the top off the egg carton, got some like tissue paper to make uh, like a, like a mattress out of and and made a little thing. And then what I did is I actually took a wireless charger and I shoved it in there. So it's plugged into the wall. So I, I get home and I just walk in that room where it is in the other room put my phone on there so it charges while it's in the bed and then I don't touch it and I leave it there and then after the kids are in bed I can grab it and whatever and that that's the point is that by having that rule and by having the discipline to follow through with it it actually makes me more free and this is how before like I said when I'm working I'm thinking I should be spending time with the kids when I'm spending time with the kids I'm thinking about things I should be doing for work Now that's not the case because there's a time for this. There's a time for that. Okay. There is a time to be working. There's a time to not be working. During that two and a half hour stretch, if I think of something that is like, oh man, I really got to do that. Maybe get out a piece of paper and write it down, but that's it. Because here's the deal is I'm not going to do it because I have rules that I abide by. And having that discipline, having those boundaries of that I am not touching that phone again until the kids are in bed allows me to spend the time with them and not feel guilty, not feel like I should be spending that time on things for work. Because that's not how it goes. Because I already know that I'm not doing it. So just knowing that it's not going to happen actually helps you to move on. And it goes the other way also. Also, what I know is, I know that today from 5 until 7.30 or so, I'm not going to be on my phone which makes me realize, okay, if there's anything I need to do 
mm-hmm. whether that be an Instagram post for work or whether that needs to be a text message I need to send or a phone call I need to make or whatever. I need to get that done before five. Otherwise, it's not going to happen until after 730. So then I don't feel guilty during that time. From that time, those couple hours, there's no, there's no concerns about what I should be doing for work because that's not the case because I put in rules to make sure that I should be doing what I am doing at that time. And you could do this with lots of different things. Whatever, whatever your vice is or whatever you struggle with or whatever you know is a time waster, you just make a rule that you can't do it and you stick to it and you'd be amazed what the difference is. So maybe for you, you go to the gym and you realize every time it takes you like 30 minutes to warm up or you never finish your workout because whatever, it takes you a long time to get going or you talk too much between your sets or something like that. Well, then you just need to make yourself a rule that establishes, that changes that, that establishes boundaries for you. So if you say, okay, every time I go in there, I sit on this bench and then it takes me whatever, however long to put on my fucking shoes or I sit there and stare at the wall or I go in the bathroom, uh, whatever, and end up in the bathroom on your phone for fucking 20 minutes before working out. You just need to make a rule. You don't take your phone in the bathroom when you're at the gym or maybe ever. Okay. Uh, that's, that's something too. You know, if, uh, another example is I realized in the mornings I'd get up and I get up early at like four 30. The idea is by five o'clock, I should be sitting down at my computer ready to work. But I realized all of a sudden it's not like till five 30 that I'm actually sitting down. All I gotta do is get up, take a shower and make some coffee. Like, how's that taking me? How's it an hour till I sit down? And I realized what would happen is I'd get up and I'd go to get in the shower and I'd like check my phone. And the next thing I know, I'm in some rabbit hole on my phone and there goes fucking 15 minutes before I even realized what's going on. So, okay, new rule. I don't even look at my phone until after that time or until at least the coffee's already brewing. Because then once the coffee's done, I'm going to go and sit down and start working. Everything's out, ready to go. So there we go. So in the morning, I don't look at my phone until the coffee pot's already started. So I get up, go to the bathroom, take a shower, get out there, start the coffee. Then at that time, it's the first time I can look at my phone for the morning. And just by making that little change, what do you know? When five o'clock, by the time five o'clock in the a.m. hits, I am seated with my laptop, ready to go, ready to knock out those first block of work in the morning before the kids get up. Okay. So what what's holding you back right what do you what's your problem what is your conflict okay what is your issue that you struggle with what you need to do is set up boundaries around that that'll that'll give you that freedom instead of fighting it because here's the other thing is your discipline your self discipline is only going to carry you so far especially throughout the day and this is something that Craig talks about it's something that I think James Clearden might talk about as well in his book, Atomic Habits, which is as the day goes on, your discipline and your capacity to hold yourself to, to be disciplined dwindles. In the morning, you have the most free will. And then as you make choices over the course of the day, your free will is going to get a little smaller and you're going to be a little more susceptible to give in to desires and stuff. That's how it goes with nutrition also. People, if they're trying to eat healthy, usually breakfast, you're fucking squared away. You know, lunch, you do okay because you packed your lunch. And you get home a little later, dinner, eh, you know, okay. And then kind of want some ice cream. And as as the day goes on, you're more and more likely to give in to temptation because your willpower diminishes throughout the day. Unless you set up boundaries and discipline yourself and hold yourself accountable. So. Where are you messing up and where do you have this conflict of knowing you should be doing one thing, but, but fighting with yourself, you know, you're driving and you have a bad habit of being on your phone while you're driving. Well, what can you do to fix that problem? Maybe you leave your phone in the trunk, <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever, or you just make a rule, you know, okay, I will not touch my phone while I drive. I just don't do it. Okay. That's gonna be a tough one, but maybe pop it in the glove box. Now you might do it, okay? 
Maybe if you have uh, some sort of disciplinary actions, if you do it, you go on the cat food diet, best diet going. You fuck up on the diet, you got to eat a whole can of cat food. You know what happens? Don't fuck up on the diet. Okay. Maybe you do the uh, cat food driving phone rule. If you're on your phone while you're driving, you got to eat a can of cat food. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why cat food instead of dog food. I don't know. Um, man, I don't think I want to eat cat food or dog food. I don't know if there's any sort of like animal food, like pet food that I really want to eat. Unless maybe you're back in that nature is metal Instagram and you're looking at that leopard get down on that boar, you know, pig, pig meat. There you go. I like bacon. So maybe, maybe if it's a leopard food diet, it wouldn't be effective. But the cat food diet, you know, that seems like that's a go. No, no kibbles, no friskies uh, and no, uh, no field mice prefer not to eat the field mice. So there you go. Give yourself boundaries, make rules. Where are you struggling? Where's your internal conflict? Where are you doing something you know you shouldn't? And then set boundaries and hold yourself accountable to those boundaries and quit doing the shit that just upsets you and start doing the things that you should be doing. And that is how you really will be free. When I'm playing with my kids during that time frame. I'm not worried about work because I know I'm not doing it, all right? Uh, I don't feel guilty about not doing something because I know that time is set aside for that, okay? So there you go. Find your, find your struggle, create some boundaries. Let's get it going. This has been episode 77 of Gas Station Cappuccino.